Hi, in this video I will show you how you can print and make a battery holder that can take both the field variety AA and AAA batteries. Recently I started working on a nickel metal hydride battery charger analyzer project and was looking for some kind of a holder for different size of batteries. Like these ones you can find on an off-the-shelf battery charger in particular for AA and AAA batteries. As you can see, this one can hold on to both AA and AAA batteries tightly. Some of the fancier chargers have uh, spring-loaded designs that can also hold on to C and D size batteries. But uh, I couldn't find anything that supports multiple size of batteries. And when you look at different kinds of battery chargers, they all seem to have their own custom molded designs built into their enclosures. In battery projects like these, I usually prefer these cheap battery holders. Uh, the single ones and buy a few and connect them in series or parallel um, but in this case yeah i really couldn't find anything that can hold both uh AAA and double a or anything that can hold multiple sizes any sizes of batteries at the same time so i decided to design and 3d print such a holder uh, to begin with for uh AA and triple a batteries since they are the most common and good enough for a lot of applications that don't demand a lot of power uh, their dimensions are close enough to be held in a relatively simple design and um, from a charger's point of view size absolutely does not matter although generally the more volume the battery has the more capacity it can pack but with nickel metal hydride batteries at least this is not always the case and uh, chargers have no way of measuring the maximum capacity of a battery or even if they could they have no way to do something smart based on this so if you want to charge, analyze, or experiment with AA and AAA batteries, this thing will hold on to them properly. You just need to print your model first, clean it up a little bit, then form the contacts. To form the contacts, you will use some solid core wire. You just need a couple of tools like pliers. I have my big old crusty pliers here. You might be better off with a smaller needle nose pliers. You just need the wire strippers and like some small tool i'm just using a two millimeter flat hat screwdriver in this case just to play with the contacts a little bit just to debug them a little bit after we form them the model is quite simple i designed it with FreeCAD, and i will dip into some of the design ideas at the end of the video so you have a gap for a triple a battery at the bottom and then you have another gap for a double a battery we have some pockets for the terminals of the AAA battery and the AA battery and at the negative terminal end you have just a little uh, groove just to form our contact here at the end and on the bottom of the model we have some holes so we're just going to uh, push our contact wires through here that we will use to form the contacts. I had no issues with these contacts formed by winding solid core thin wires around the holes at the terminals and I will show you how. All the time will tell how long these contacts last as I keep using them, popping the batteries in and out. Depending on how this video and how these DIY tabs go, I might follow up with an upgraded model which can be used with actual battery contacts. I sliced the model with Cura for my Lulzbot mini printer and not much to do on the slicer front. Uh, it doesn't need any supports while printing. Just make sure the opening for the batteries looks upwards. Um, there's not much infill space on the model, but if you are optimizing for speed or material, you can go as low as 10% uh, uh, for the infill density. That's all good. On my loose boat with standard quality and pretty much default settings, uh, PETG print took about 90 minutes. Uh, PLA or ABS print takes about half an hour with uh, similar or standard settings. Uh, you don't need any finishing in particular, but after you print, just get rid of the excess bits, strings as usual. Uh, some light sanding might be needed here and there, depending on the tolerances of your printer, but I didn't need any at all. The prints I have here, I printed with PLA and PETG. Both works quite well. I imagine ABS will work well as well, since it's an engineering plastics. To form the contacts, you need some solid core wire. I have 24 AWG here, but you can go as thick as 20 G. You can also use uh, stranded wires, uh, such as this one, if you have any excess lying around. 
but they are much more tedious to work with and the contacts won't be as good. Uh, because of the strands, they might just uh, detach. But if you have any excess lying around, it's fine. Just make sure you are using thinned wires, not exposed copper wire, since copper will oxidize, increasing its resistance, and your contacts will get worse over a relatively short amount of time. You will need about 15 centimeters or 6 inches of uh, wire for each contact, and we will strip about two thirds of it and leave the rest for connections. No harm in being generous with the wire length here since we can always cut off the excess. Uh, but, but if it falls short, we have to start again or use multiple wires, which will be difficult to work with or we will end up with a wacky contact. So to strip the, the wire, I'm just going to use my wire strippers. I get in the middle there, like just leave uh, like one third of the wire intact um, for connections to our holder. Just strip it and you can just use your pliers to pull it it's going to be a little bit tricky or you can just even do multiple strips here you can perhaps do another one here you can use your pliers to take them out as well so i will start with the negative terminal and on the negative terminal side we have a larger hole down at the bottom and on the back of it we have two smaller holes so I will start by pushing the wire through the larger hole at the bottom and then gently guide it through. These two holes form about five loops, just enough to fill in this uh, groove that is reserved for the negative terminal. All right, that looks good enough. Um, while winding, there might be some happy accidents here and there, like a wire forming an unintentional curve or some slack. Uh, don't worry about them too much since they might result in better contacts when you push the battery. Also, try not to wind it too tight since we can use some wiggle room later to adjust the contacts a little bit. If you have any excess wire, you can just pop it in the grooves that are on the model for now or just you can cut it or you know form a physical knot of some sort in the, in the wires that's all fine the positive terminal is a little bit trickier since we need to form both the double a and the triple a contacts separately but the same rules applies and there is less of a gap here that needs filling start from the bottom and for the triple a battery wind it a few times just a few loops is enough then move on to the AA positive terminal and the holes on the positive terminal are a little bit different they're just just over here which you may or may not be seeing from the camera but i can see the uh, light through the hole here there is one in the in the middle of the terminal right over here and there is one on the side at the bottom here and these two holes are where we are going to form our loops Once you are done, test your contacts with different sizes and brands of batteries using a multimeter. Let's start with the AA battery first. I'm just going to fit the positive terminal first and then push for the negative terminal. And just make sure that it's nice and tight. If the battery isn't sitting there tightly, obviously your contacts will not work. You can have a visual inspection on the contacts as well, just to make sure that everything works as intended. It's, the camera is just refusing to focus there but uh, there is a bit of contact there and there is like a bit of contact happening there too not a problem so to test our contacts uh, we will just measure first the battery voltage straight from the terminals of the battery this is 1.30 volts that's good and then we'll just measure the voltage from our connections which is again 1.30 volts in this case this uh, holder works properly with this AA battery. Now let's try it with a AAA battery. Again, I will start by pushing in my positive terminal first and then just 
push the negative terminal. Again, the first thing that you want to check is just that the battery sits in there nice and tight. And once that's working, you'll get in there, measure the battery first from its terminals, 1.29 volts, and now from the holder's connections, again, 1.29 volts. If there are any problems, get in there with a small flathead screwdriver or any tool that's small and strong enough to fit and pull the wires inwards a bit to get the wire contact bed, uh, to the battery terminals. And that's pretty much all to it. Now let's check the design in FreeCAD as promised. I have been using FreeCAD for a while now and it has been great for me so far, especially for these prototyping projects. As its name suggests, it's free and also open source. It works on a number of platforms. I had no issues whatsoever with it running on Linux, Mac OS and Windows with no problems at all. At times it might be rough, a bit around the edges, but I have witnessed a lot of improvements both on the reliability and feature front and kudos to the great community behind it. Uh, there is a ton of tutorials and resources on it out there. And if you are looking for a zero cost feature packed CAD solution, I can't recommend FreeCAD highly enough. I won't get into the details of the design, but we'll go through the general workflow so you can design your own battery holders, perhaps incorporated into the enclosure of your next project. First, I started with modeling a AA and a AAA battery. Super straightforward. You can look up the range dimensions or just measure the batteries you have with calipers. I uh, use the upper range of dimensions and always round up. For example, if you look at the AA battery here, and this is the sketch. Uh, so I have 7.25 millimeters of radius here, which is going to give me 14.5 millimeters. And uh, the diameter of a AA battery ranges between 13.5 and 14.5. You can even go for 15 millimeters, that's fine. And that will give you some slack while you're just uh, working with the battery. So just make it slightly bigger. And that depends a little bit on the tolerances on your printer as well. Just try to round it up and err on the larger end of ranges. The next thing you need to do is to form a box that the batteries could fit in loosely. I'm just going to hide this one for a while and uh, maybe that was our original box. Yeah, just designed a box like this that the batteries can fit in there loosely. This could be the enclosure for your next project as well. Then transform the batteries, move and rotate them to their position on the box. And once you are happy about the general position and rotation, just perform a boolean cut to leave a gap for the battery. And here I did it for the AA battery and for the AAA battery as well. And finally, add some holes, pockets and chamfers for contacts and ease of use. Depending on the tolerances of your printer, you might adjust these slightly for a better fit or contact. You can design such a model for any battery size or type or any enclosure and you can use whatever CAD software you're comfortable with as well. Uh, the design workflow will be pretty much the same. You just need to design your batteries first, boolean cut from your enclosure and then some extra holes and chamfers and pockets for connections and tabs. I will add the model and the free CAD project down in the video description below as well. It's all open source, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and ideas and if you enjoyed my video don't forget to like and subscribe see you next time